Hello everyone, this is Klaus Aranha from the University of Tsukuba and this is Experiment Designs in Computer Science. In this video, I'm going to talk about how we will conduct the course. So, a lot of very practical matters. Let's get started. I want to talk to you about class format, uh, the communications channels that we use, where you get the course materials, the schedule, and how I'm going to grade the course. Now, go for Manaba for the latest and most correct information about course policy. One thing important to note is that this year, the course will be online on demand. This is because we have students on several time zones. The idea is that I do these pre-recorded videos and I expect you to watch these videos in full. Of course, you can watch the video at any time you want and at any speed you want. The videos will be published on YouTube and Teams. Now, on Fridays from 3.15 to 6 Japan time, I hold the office hours where, which are used to answer questions about the class and anything else that you want to talk about to me. Uh, I don't count attendance on office hours, so only come if you have questions. However, do come, do bring your questions. There are many topics that are new for people here and it's important to have this place for you to check if you understand everything that we discuss in class. I will be online on Teams. Okay, so the primary way for you is to get on Teams. There will be a link on Manaba to talk to me. Also, you can come to my office in room SB904. If you come to my office, I would appreciate if you send me a message ahead of time. Okay, if you cannot come to the office hours, uh, in the next slide, there are other ways to contact me. Now, there is one exception to the on demand. The final exam will be online synchronous, so it will be during the office hours. If this is too difficult for your time zone, uh, contact me and we'll see what we can do about it. Now, uh, like I said before, communication between us is very important. Uh, for some students, this course can be hard because there are many new topics, so do not leave questions unanswered. Now, what are the communication channels that you should use? The best communication channel is for you to come to the office hours on Friday from 3.15 to 6 on Teams or in my office, Japan time. The second best is the Manaba forum. So you can use Manaba, there is a forum option that you can use to send any sort of questions or to start any type of topics. Uh, this is good because other students can also see what is being discussed and can benefit from the questions and answer. Finally, of course, you can send me an email if you have a question that you would prefer to talk about in private. Finally, and this is important, Every lecture I post an attendance survey on Manaba. The survey is not graded, but it is required to count for your attendance. This survey, I usually ask questions about the contents of the class. So this, uh, this surveys help me check how much the students understand the class and if I need to change the material to make something easier or harder in the future. Now, where do you get the materials? All the lecture notes are published on Manaba, so you should check on Manaba every week for links for the materials, the PDF and the videos. If you are a student of the University of Tsukuba, but not registered in the course, you can access Manaba with this key. So you write this key on Manaba and you get access to this course. If you are not a student of the University of Tsukuba, you can access the course material in the following GitHub repository. So here's a link to the GitHub repository where we have the material of the course. However, uh, the GitHub repository changed software. So every year I add new things or sometimes that are material that there is are under like progress or maybe there are materials from previous years. So be careful uh, when you're using the GitHub repository. Uh, the best material is the one that is published on Manaba. Videos are published on YouTube and Teams. You can watch them later, you can change the speed, etc. I will delist videos from previous years as I publish the videos from 2022, but they should still be accessed by their links if you have access to the links. Now, I want to give some acknowledge. This course was actually inspired by Felipe Campello and his material Design and Analysis of Experiment. So you can reach the original lecture notes here. All good ideas are thanks to Felipe, and all errors are my own. 
uh, please submit errors as GitHub issues so I can improve the material. And this is also, I want to always remind you how important it is for you to open source your material and to share it freely of other people because this helps knowledge sharing, this helps knowledge multiply in the world. If you want to study a book, if there is one book that I would recommend is Design and Analysis of Experiment by Douglas Montgomery. Uh, there are other links, other papers. There I will I will uh, mention several papers during the during the lecture, and all of them are listed on Mana by GitHub. So there is a lot of reading to do on this course to learn more. Now the course schedule is like you're watching here. I'm not going to go line by line, but this is about how we are going to uh, follow the topics of this course. Uh, some important lectures. Uh, we're gonna have a review one. So if you have difficulty on topic ones, two, three, you can bring them to review one for us to discuss that. And I will also re review the first report. The final exam on is on July 1st. And before that, we're going to have a final review where you can bring all your questions about the course as a whole. Now, talking about final exam, let's talk about grading. We have two reports, R1 and R2, and a final examination. Each of them will be graded from 0 to 100. The final grade is a weighted average. So we have the 0 0.2 times the first report, 0 0.4 times the second report, and 0 0.4 times the examination grade. The grade of this course follows the SCOOB standard, so a passing grade is 60, and to get A, uh, you, have to, you need more than 90. A plus 2, you need more than 90. Now let's talk about the reports and the final examination. So the final examination covers the topic of the entire course. Uh, I talked to you about before about the um, weekly um, attendance survey. Uh, the questions in the final examination will be, in a sense, similar to the questions in the attendance survey. So that's another reason for you to take the attendance sur survey every week. Uh, the, the final examination must be answered in English. Okay, uh, You may prepare one A4 page of handwritten notes. Okay, you can write on both sides. So I usually let students uh, bring a way for page that you can write front and back by hand, please. Uh, and you can use this as a reference in the exam. Um, the notes can be in any English. So you can write uh, the notes in English, you can write in Chinese, in Japanese, whatever language you want. The notes must include your name and student ID. And I will open a place where you can scan the notes and submit it. I like to see the notes because that gives me an idea of what the students think is important about the course. And that helps me decide what I should teach and how I should teach on the next year. Of course, the notes will not be graded in any way. It's just for reference and for me to improve the course. You can also bring an English dictionary to the exam, English Japanese, English Ch Chinese, English Portuguese, whatever you need. Other than the notes and the dictionary, no other consultation is allowed during the exam. Now, the two reports are two mini papers. In these mini papers, you must plan, perform and analyze an experiment of your choice. Uh, so you choose a scientific question to answer, you design an experiment, you execute the experiment, you analyze the data, and then you write a conclusion. So that's the report. Okay? The difference between report 1 and report 2 are the expectations. Report 1 is right at the beginning of the course, so there are a few expectations about it. Report 2 is at the end of the course, so I expect you to analyze the experiment and to prepare the experiment based on what we learned in the course. Now, a few more things not directly related to the course that I want to talk about. Uh, one is about the Computer Science English Program, CSE. So this course is related to the CSE. Uh, you might have seen an explanation of CSE during the orientation, and this is a reminder. So CSE uh, supports a master degree fully in English, and if you plan to take most of your classes in English, even if uh, I would encourage you to enroll in CSE. To enroll in CSE, you send an email to s-g30 at cs.scuba.ac.jp with this information, your name, in both in ask and also in kanji. Okay, so include both of these and also your uh, student ID. Okay, so your Scuba University student ID. If you're watching this on YouTube, please don't send an email. Um, okay. 
For more information, see the orientation material, okay? Uh, and a very brief self-introduction. So as I said at the beginning, my name is Klaus Aranha. I am originally from Brazil, and my research topics are evolutionary algorithms and artificial life. My hobbies are game programming and also geocaching, which is like real life uh, searching for secrets in the world. So my webpage is this. You can learn more about my research here on this webpage, and I'm always happy to talk to you about any sort of topics. Remember that graduate school is not only about your study, it's also about how you meet new people who are researchers and how you interact with them. That's it for the second video. And in the next video, I'm talk, gonna talk a little bit more detail about report one. See you there.